in this lecture we are going to discuss about the gear as well as its design so first of all we need to understand what exactly is gear so basically gear is a mechanical drive so gear is a mechanical drive which is used to transfer the power from a prime mover to the point of application the prime mover can be any electric motor let us say or it can be an ic engine which is producing the power so from the motor to certain application or from the engine to certain application if we want to transmit the power then at that point gear drive will be useful so what exactly are the advantages or benefits of gear drives so there are basic uh, there are various advantages or features we can say the first the first feature of gear is that you can use it to transfer the power at different speed than the prime mover let me tell you an example let us say there is an industrial crane so in the case of industrial crane it is necessary that whatever is the speed of motor but the speed of the crane cannot be very high so for example if the motor is rotating at 1440 rpm but crane might be moving or it might be rotating at only 40 rpm so to achieve such a large speed reduction gear drive will be useful the second feature or second advantage is that if you want variable speed rather more importantly if you want multiple speeds of operation at this point of time gear drive is highly useful for example let us take the case of lathe machine so in the case of lathe machine what happens is we need to perform various operations such as there can be facing operation there can be turning operation there can be knurling operation finishing operation etc so particularly uh, or there can be rough turning also so particularly during the rough turning operation the speed of rotation of the job is less it is slow as compared to the speed of rotation of job during the finishing operation in which uh, in the case of rough turning depth of cut is more but speed is less in the case of finish cut the depth of cut is very less but the speed of rotation of the job is very high so at that point because we want multiple speeds for various operations so it does not mean that for every speed we will install a, simp uh, a separate electric motor in that lathe machine so to achieve variable speed reduction or multiple speeds in the same machine using the same input of the electric motor we will need a gear drive and that's why there is a gear drive or gear box in a lathe machine the third feature for which gear drives are popular is to translate the rotary motion into linear motion this can be very well achieved with the help of a gear drive for example if there is an electric motor again uh, or such a prime mover then if you want to convert that rotary motion into the linear motion of a conveyor belt so in that case this gear drive will be highly useful to you so after understanding these features we need to focus on one part which is the design of the gear so during the design of the gear we need to consider some important aspects one of the important aspect is the minimum number of teeth to begin with the design so depending on the pressure system of the gear design and manufacture so uh, the minimum number of gear teeth one second minimum number of teeth so in order to ensure that there is uh, not any failure of the gear we need to ensure that there are adequate number of teeth as well as we need to have minimum number of teeth to avoid any interference while meshing of the gear so this minimum number of teeth is designated as z minimum and it is given as 2 upon sine square alpha where alpha is the pressure angle so for various pressure angles there will be various number of minimum number of teeth which are available for example if alpha is equal to 20 degree for 20 degree pressure angle and full depth involute system it is always safe you can conveniently assume that number of teeth on pinion are 18 so with the help of this guessing you can start with the design of gear 
corresponding to this if you have the speed ratio then let us say i is the speed ratio so i is nothing but zg which is number of teeth on gear divided by number of teeth on pinion so and also this is exactly equal to the ratio of speed of pinion to the speed of gear so with the help of this relation you can make sure that you have selected a minimum number of teeth and you can proceed with the design and check for the correctness of the design the next thing that we need to understand about the gear design is the concept of face width just give me a second yes so the next thing which is important to be understood is the face width why face width is very important in case of gears because there are basically some possibilities for example the first possibility is that uh, if your face width is too large then because of that what will happen if it is too large then whatever is the load which is being transmitted by the gear it might get concentrated on one end of the gear tooth it might get focused on one end if the gear uh, tooth is having a, a significantly large face width the second possibility that can happen uh, i'm sorry so if it is too large so load will get concentrated and that is why you will obtain a non uniform distribution of the load so that is a kind of waste of the material as well as imbalancing the system on the other hand if you have uh, what we can say a smaller face width so let us say you have a small face width so because of that what will happen is this particular gear tooth will have very poor capacity to resist the shocks as well as it will not be able to absorb the vibrations it will be very much prone to the failure pertaining to this vibrations and that is also one more thing is that if the gears are very small then their wear rate actually is large which means they will deteriorate at a faster rate and that is why they are not recommended so in general the optimum range of gear width or face width it is in the range of 8 times module to the 12 times module so uh, mostly in the uh, design that we will be studying we will be considering the face width to be equal to 10 times module this will be the general understanding that we will be using during our uh, design process there will be only one change when we will be designing the bevel gears so that change will be informed at that point of time after this clarification what we need is the concept of effective load on gear teeth let me just put down the title for you so this is the parameter against which we need to make our design calculations so effective load on gear tooth this parameter is indicated with the help of the symbol p effective so what exactly is this what happens is or first of all why we need this concept or why we are so much interested in this so what happens is gear tooth even though once it is constructed it gets meshed with the other gear tooth from the uh, its companion part or for example a gear tooth on the pinion will get meshed with the uh, corresponding tooth on the gear fine but the problem is they are not meshing very smoothly they are meshing with certain velocity because both the pinion and gear they are rotating so they are meshing uh, they are coming in contact suddenly at a certain velocity plus the torque which is acting on them it may not be constant for example when you are beginning with the operation let us say you are suddenly starting the electrical motor or you are suddenly starting the ic engine so at that point there will be a sudden uh, torque that needs to be transmitted across the entire gearing system so that will be the maximum torque against which you have to take care while you are designing the gear so this uh, maximum torque it is accounted with the help of a parameter known as cs or this is known as service factor the basic definition of service factor is that it is simply the ratio of the maximum torque that you have to transfer or that you have to transmit divided by the working torque what is the meaning of working torque this is a torque which remains fairly constant once the equipment has started from its inertia and this is particularly applicable when the device 
or when that uh, particular equipment starts from the rest. So at that point, you have to take into account the service factor. The second factor which is necessary to be understood is the parameter CV. This parameter is known as velocity factor. This factor helps us to mathematically accommodate uh, in the design process. It helps us to mathematically accommodate the effect of velocity of the mating gears or meshing gears so that the design becomes quite safe. And then the third factor, I will uh, get back to velocity factor on the basis of velocity. So then the third factor that is necessary, it is PT, which is nothing but the tangential force, which is acting because of the torque MT, which is acting on the gear tooth. So the combination of all of all these three parameters gives us the effective load on the gear tooth and this effective load on the gear tooth P effective, it is given as CSPT upon CV. So, like I said, CS is the service factor. PT is the tangential force, which is due to the torque, which is being transmitted by the gear. CV is the velocity factor. The CS will be generally mentioned in the problem in terms of percentage of the working torque. For example, if the problem statement tells you that the maximum working torque is 150 percent of the normal working torque, then you can say that this is 150 percent. So 150 divided by 100. So this becomes 1.5. So you have to accommodate CS as 1.5. Then comes uh, the parameter CV, the velocity factor. It depends on the velocity of gear. For example, in case of spur gears, let me just put, put it here for you. Let us say when we are designing the spur gear. So in this case, there are three values of CV which are possible. The first case will be if the velocity of the gear, the pitch line velocity of the gear is less than 10 meters per second. At this point of time, if you want to calculate CV, it will be given as 3 upon 3 plus the pitch line velocity V. So there will be a second case in which the velocity it will be less than 20 meters per second but this velocity will be greater than 10 meter per second so in this range if you want to calculate the value of cv it will be given as 6 upon 6 plus v then the next thing that will be necessary for us the next possibility is that what if the velocity the pitch line velocity is greater than 20 meter per second at this point of time the cv will be given as 5.6 upon 5.6 plus square root of v so this is the difference that we need to understand from here we can easily determine what will be the value of cv so then cv is also done what is the next thing that we need to understand we need to understand is the pt so pt it will be obtained like i said PT will be obtained from the torque to be transmitted. Where do we get the tor uh, torque to be transmitted? We get it from the expression of the power which is to be transmitted. From the basics, we know that power is uh, that is to be transmitted. It is equal to 2 pi mt upon 60. Where uh, this np is the speed of pinion through which the power is getting transmitted. We are dividing it by 60 into 10 to 6 so that we can obtain the expression of torque in terms of Newton mm. By rearranging the equation, we can obtain the value of mt and this mt will be obtained in Newton mm. Once this is done, so once this is done, uh, we know that the torque is transmitted because the force Pt is acting through a distance and that distance is equal to the half of each circle diameter of the gear. So that is why what we can say is if I want mt, then mt is equal to the force which is acting, the tangential force multiplied by the pitch circle diameter of the gear divided by 2, that is pitch circle radius. So if I am interested in pt, then it will be given as 2mt divided by dp dash. So now I will also have the expression of pt. Once I have all of these, I will have uh, p effective which is equal to cspt upon cv then we will be utilizing this parameter p effective uh, through the design such as uh, on the basis of beam strength and on the basis of wear strength 
in the design of spur gears we'll uh, we will get to that in the next lecture thank you